It started with a daydream about zombies. Could you survive Z-Day with just a couple of jet skis, some lobster traps, a spear gun, and an island in Maine? After preparing for our trip, setting sail, and catching our lobsters, we set out down the coast to try to find a deserted island. And somehow we found one of the coolest places on the main coast. Perfection. Do you, do you just need some, just want some quiet time? Oh, there's just so much goodness in what happened today and tonight. This is how to live. Look at the claws on this guy. And without any further ado, I welcome you to Lobster Catching Cook Survival Adventure, Episode 1 from How to Live. So I lost Sarah. I don't know where she is. I don't know where Sarah is right now. I honestly don't know where my wife is right now. I came to a stop. You there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you there? Honey, you there? Can you hear me? I'm starting what happens to be one of the best adventures my wife and I have ever had with this scariest moment of the trip. And it's because mother nature does not mess around and it will come and bite you in the ass when you least expect it. What you're about to see was five minutes beforehand. You guys remember that scene in Jaws? And it was just in the news the other day that there's a massive great white, like a 13, 14 footer leaving New Hampshire coming up to Maine. And that was like a week ago, so... And these jet skis are only like 12 feet long, so we're gonna need a bigger boat. Quick trip to uh, 30 miles down the coast. We call this in Maine pea soup. All right, honey, let's go to lunch. I think it's, pretty sure lunch is that way. Not totally sure. So we both get up on plane to continue the adventure. And I asked my wife to turn a little bit to starboard to get on track. And that's the last time I saw her. But we're gonna get back to that at the end of this episode. But first, we have some pretty cool new equipment to show you. These things are awesome. So I did get a little bit bored this morning and I ended up installing a 3.5 millimeter jack into the chassis of the headset housing, taking the audio signal from inside the headset, transmitting it through a transmitter here to a receiver on the top of the GoPro. And this is what you get. It's a huge victory. For me, you never know if some of this stuff's gonna work. I love it when a plan comes together. You guys get to hear the conversation we're gonna have when we're jet skating. And so let's see what's gonna sound like with my wife. She's not here right now, she's at work. Okay, here we go. You ready? Honey, are you there? Can you hear me? How's everything going? It's going good, honey, but I ended up sucking up some lobster trap line into the jet drive and I'm being thrown into the rocks. Listen, relax, not a big deal. Throw your anchor, grab a fishing pole, and try to catch a striper. I'll be there in five minutes, okay, honey? I hope you're good at Tetris. Honey, my jet ski's not even full yet. Look at all that room. And mine's completely packed, and we still have tent, food, dive gear, waders, and I have not packed one adult beverage yet. So if you want to have a beer by the campfire tonight, we're going to figure out where that's going to go. What have we actually done to go island hopping, camping, catch and cook on these sea dudes? We got some ramen, some jerky, just our cooking supplies, tiny burner. Yeah, we've got some fishing poles, and we have a pretty big bucket up there. Mine's got the same thing. And it's mine, it's got camera gear. And then back in here is our cooler with our drinks and ice. And then here I have some dive gear, my wetsuit, like literally so much here. You can't actually go camping without the chairs. Chairs make a big difference. That's a chair with a lazy boy recliner set up. And then we have a table. So we kind of did, we were supposed to go so minimal. We're glamping. Comment below if you guys have ever done the same thing. All right, now is as good a time as any to talk about these jet skis. We have sea Dew Trophy 170 2022s, and they are amazing vehicles. But first, I want to preface by saying How to Live gets sponsored by nobody. We actually just do a ton of research and go with what works the best. 
All right, so the reason we chose the Sea-Doo 170 Trophy Fish Pro is because it's a game changer, and I love game changers. This vessel is the first PWC designed ground up to be a true adventure jet ski. It comes with an integrated live well, an integrated anchoring system, and it has a ton of different storage. With an extended rear deck, it's also one of the biggest jet skis you can get. And if I had one jet ski to pick for Z-Day, this would be the one. Especially if the zombies can't swim. I also believe that we're the first to ever use one of these as a lobster boat. There's a couple things about Maine that are really cool that I want to mention. And one is, it has a massive tidal coastline. If you actually stretch it all out, almost 4,500 miles, which is longer than California's coastline. And second, it has a huge number of islands. And that gives us a massive opportunity to go camping, try these jet skis out, and see if we would stand a chance on Z-Day. No two sounds go better together than fire crackling and waves crashing. That's what I think. Now I'm not going to give our exact location for two reasons. Number one, I just don't want to ruin it with too much attention. And number two, that's half of the fun you guys, is looking at a map, deciding where you're going to go, and imagining what that special spot might be like. And without any further ado or detail, let's get rolling. My sled is very, very heavy right now. She's a little bit of a slob. I hope it floats. <laughs> it does. Small victories, man. Micro wins. I I'd consider that a macro win. I didn't put too much on it. Seriously. I almost forgot. Actually, let's rewind it five minutes and take a look at how Sarah left the float. Okay, let's cast off. While Sarah wasn't looking, I ended up reattaching this red strap. There's no setup here. This is truly how it happened. Oh, she's much heavier. Depending on how fast the zombies are coming at you, you probably don't want to do stunts like this on Z-Day. Well, or maybe you do. Um, maybe you want to have fun with it. You got it, honey? She had no idea. And some of you might be like, oh man, that's mean. But fresh, you guys, we like to play around. We like to have a good time and just have fun with life. Does that mean it was just too funny to watch? <laughs> you could have pulled pretty hard. All right, let's see how it does now. And she's off, it's seaworthy. She's off to go offshore. So our first mission is to get the lobsters. Now last week we ended up baiting our traps and throwing them overboard from the jet skis. That allowed for a week to go by and the traps to hopefully be filled. Now this was a fun set. These happen to be seven foot seas. I ended up screenshotting the NOAA wave height buoy that's right next to us. And all you boaters will know it's so frustrating. Pictures and video never do the seas day justice like not even close. The closest way to do it is with a long lens so the actual boat or jet ski is lost in the trough of the wave. But at the end of the day, these seas just do not look like seven foot seas in the film. In real life, they felt and looked every bit of seven foot. And to tell you the truth, Sarah and I would both rather be on jet skis in these seas than a much bigger boat. Yeah, we might have stuck a GoPro camera onto the trap to see actually what it looks like down there. And it's pretty damn cool. All right, where were we? I get so distracted. Back to the start of the trip. What are you at? Okay, I'm at seven. All right, what we're doing now is we're actually setting our cruise speed. Come up to, what are you at? Six. I'm up to seven. Okay, that's seven. We're setting our idle speed, and it's just kind of nice. That's seven? Yeah. You are a lot lighter than me. The reason I'm putting this in here, this is an awesome feature. And there you go. So we're uh, cruising out the river. We don't want to make a wake. From trolling to not throwing a huge wake, setting your exact idle speed is a fantastic feature. What are we doing? We're going to go test run our Z-Day. Okay, let's just say we've gotten off the dock. We've, we've, we've had these things fueled up. Z-Day happens. There's zombies everywhere. We know zombies can't swim, or at least in most of the films, they can't swim. There is one film that they can swim. We'll just ignore that one. Okay. 
We're going to go to our lobster trap. We get to survive on lobster, right? It's, it's worst case Z-Day scenario, right? There, there definitely is. I'm going to try to spearfish for some flounder. I believe, I think lobstering on Z-Day is probably going to be the easiest thing to do. There'll be less lobstermen because I, I assume most of the lobstermen will, will be zombies. So we'll have less yes, pressure probably. on the lobsters. That'll be good. So let's go pull a trap and see if we can actually have lobster on this catching cork or if we're going to starve and eat seaweed. <laughs> All right, it's time to see how these things handle at speed, fully loaded, topped off with fuel. We've studied the map and done a ton of research, and this is our working game plan right now. Grab the lobsters a couple miles out of harbor and then head north until we find the land of scattered islands. But it's a pretty fluid plan. Things might change when we get there and realize certain islands are not campable, if that's even a word. All right, honey, do you want me to say it or do you want to say it? Don't. Either one of us are going to say it today. We're going to see what happens. What we're referencing here is every time you seem to say, hey, the seas don't look that bad, it's always premature. Sure, you don't want me to say it? Okay. Well, the second you say it. That's true. It means you're in for it. And all you boaters out there know exactly what I'm talking about. One thing that's great about these headphones, I had to jack into them. I made a... A transmitter form. You can see I think it's a balloon on this side. We put it put it in a balloon because I smoked a couple of transmitters in the salt water. And you can hear Sarah. I think loud is loud and clear. Go ahead and say test test. Test test. Here you go. These. So these jet skis are wicked capable. They are so like just sturdy and safe and really bad seas. But they get wet. So you just have to prepare and very convenient unintended illustration in three, two, one, go. You know? Watch your green. Oh, honey. Sorry. Okay, okay. We'll separate out a little bit like that. So these things do like to shoot water sideways. That's why they, you know, they do have a dry ride considering, but um, you have a rock wall over there, hon. I know, I was trying to get you to go to your green buoy. Besides just the convenience of being able to talk to each other and not feeling lonely when you're on a jet ski, these things also are very good for safety. There we go. We do like to abide by the buoys here, even though we're on jet skis. The bottom on main is granite. And granite and fiberglass, they don't play well in the sandbox. It's not like the keys where you have a sandbar and you can kind of just beach it up on a sandy place. So it's still a little saucy. That's what's nice. Also, you have enough power. Once you feel your your bow dipping down, you can kind of belt it and make sure you don't do a lawn dart. So after a quick trip out through some twos, the conclusion is these things are awesome. They're very seaworthy. You just got to prepare to get wet every once in a while. And before you know it, it's finally time to pull some traps. This is like Christmas morning. You don't know what you're going to get. You might get crabs. You might get nothing, you might get skunked, or you might get the mother load. I love this. Look at this. You ever have those moments where you're just mesmerized? You're not sure why, but you know that mother nature has something to do with it. These moments are the essence of why we do what we do. Some people may ask, you know, is this set up for lobstering, a jet ski, you know, a trophy? No, that's, it's not like typically set up perfectly for it, but I will say <laughs> it's set up the best of any jet ski I know of. Typically we have a mat in the back here and that's where we put the trap right now. We don't have that option because we have so much gear on that we're just going to pull it real quick and just see if we can grab one out of here for lunch and dinner. And I'm pretty sure we're the first to ever pull a lobster trap on a jet ski. <laughs> I guess Forrest Gump's mom got it correct. It is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. And honestly, whether you're on a jet ski or a boat, that's what makes lobstering so much fun. Nice! I see one. Anything? Yeah. Christmas. There is a lobster in there, and it looks like a keeper. Honey, I got mine. <laughs> you won't share? Oh, that's a beautiful keeper. Look at that! I brought you an extra Snickers. Oh, that's perfect. This is gonna be perfect for eating tonight. 
Oh my God, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about, everybody. It's about finding a way, finding your way. And yes, Sarah and I both have our non-commercial legal lobster licenses in Maine. If you're a Maine resident, you have the ability to take a class online and get your lobster license. You're allowed five traps per person and two people per boat, or PWC should you be between boats. Believe it or not, what I'm about to do is the most dangerous part of the whole thing. It's throwing the trap over and making sure the lines don't get caught around your feet. If they do, it could be a pretty dark, cold death. So let's just not try this at home. Full disclosure, I was a commercial fisherman and a lobsterman for a good chunk of my life, and I've had plenty of close calls to learn from. All right, with the first trap down, it's time to see if Sarah can get hers. Of course, you guys, I would obviously share with her, but the goal for us is to each grab a lobster. Let's see what she has in her box of chocolates. Were you gonna share your lobster with me or um, if I don't get anything? Of you, course, honey. You gonna be chivalrous like that? Of course. Cause you're gonna want me to share this one. Nice. <laughs> Wait till you see it. This is a female. We can't keep this one. She's got a lot of eggs. Yep. And she's not notched. So I'm going to V-notch her real quick. V-notching is when you cut a V-notch in one of the flippers, one from the left, of an egg-bearing female. Any lobsterman can do it, and it's encouraged. And it is one of the reasons the lobster industry in Maine has done so well. Every time an egg female comes up, you V-notch it, you send it over, and that V-notch stays with her for the rest of her life. You can't take her. She's an egg-bearing female. And she'll help ensure that we have a healthy population of lobsters for years to come. Do you want a piece of this? Oh my God, look at that one. <laughs> look at the claws on this guy. Well, everybody, yeah, everybody. Look how big they are. That is awesome. That was a relief. We caught the lobster we needed to eat for that night. The sea day thing isn't turning out to be that bad after all. Now we have to travel about 30 miles up the coast to a place I like to call the land of a thousand islands and find a safe sheltered place to camp. Have you ever flown a drone and driven a jet ski at the same time? Yeah, me neither. Let's see how this is gonna work out. Not too bad actually, with the tracking feature on DJI, it does pretty well. You just have to pay attention. You're over water, you don't wanna lose your drone. I've done that a couple of times. I'm still not quite sure how we're gonna land this thing on a jet ski though. Should have thought through that before I launched it. Just watch, watch your GPS, honey. Watch your GPS. and unintentional payback in three, two, one, go. Pause. Oh. What'd you do? Well, that was payback for earlier. I will say this though, if you're trying to get the tracking shot from the front of the vehicle, it's pretty easy to outdrive the drone. So once we got our shots, we decided to land it on a jet ski in the middle of the ocean with waves pitching the jet ski left, right, up and down. Fingers are crossed. Hopefully not chopped off. We got this, do not overreact. Predict the waves, predict the movement of the jet skis. Both of them, at the same time. Sarah, honey, may the gods of catching drones be with you today. So close, come on. Well, I just puckered myself, honey. I can't believe we just pulled that one off. After a quick 30 mile trip up the coast, Sarah and I find one of the coolest islands I've ever been on in Maine. It was just majestic, the whole thing. Have you believed in anything? You risk your whole life to fulfill a dream. This is the 
most exciting part of any adventure? Finding this new land, finding a new place to camp. And just like that, we're rolling past 20 minutes. You guys know the rules if you watch the channel. We're going to call it an episode. Stay tuned for what has to be the highlight of this channel. This is unbelievable. Look at this. I can't believe this exists. Episode 2 of Catch and Cook on Z-Day. We're going to spend the night right here. We're going to camp right here. Oh, we got a flounder. Oh my God. And for those of you that are like, what the heck are they on jet skis for? Well, we're hell number one for the brand new 440 MTI. You just have to wait for it. And the mighty Kraken 52 will be here this summer. So be sure to subscribe for a ton more uniquely how to live adventures. Gonna move these mountains.